what I'm here to talk to you about today is predictive analytics and how predictive analytics can improve the well-being of seniors, help reduce their health care costs, and at the same time provide new revenue stream opportunities for the senior living industry. First of all though, because not everyone might be familiar, what is predictive analytics? So predictive analytics is really taking large data sets of information, connecting them to outcomes, and being able to analyze over time these large data sets and be able to improve their ability to predict a certain outcome. So the most common probably way of thinking about this is weather forecasting. So for decades we have been predicting the weather based on models that take all these variables of very complex models, of all the things that are happening in the atmosphere and using them and analyzing them over time and if you know what kind of weather outcome happens based on some of these trends, you can go back and actually improve the models and say, well, this set of things actually did result in this outcome. So over time, these models get better and better and better. Now, maybe weather isn't the best example because we all get frustrated when somebody misdiagnoses the weather, right? But it is the oldest and most logical example to think about. So at Best Buy Health, what we've been doing is taking these concepts and using activities of daily living of seniors being able to create massive data sets on the thousands of seniors we've been monitoring over several years, working with the healthcare companies, getting access to the claims data to know what outcomes are actually happening based on these trends in this data, so that we can use these models to predict high cost healthcare episodes that are going to be happening and instead replace them with low cost interventions. So to get into the next layer of detail, if we have information about the time spent in bed, how often a senior is living in their apartment, their time spent in a bathroom or in the kitchen, uh, we can take those data sets and over time connect them to these outcomes and then predict things like complications that are arising with CHF or the onset of urinary tract infection, even social isolation and onset of uh, depression. And think about how powerful that is if we can actually start predicting those things before they result in these high cost episodes and instead replace them with low cost interventions. So in the three studies that we've completed, one of which was published, we, uh, we've shown that we can reduce the healthcare costs using ADL monitoring or activities of daily living monitoring by 16 to 22% of dual eligible seniors. 16 to 22%. But it makes complete sense when you think about it, right? You're replacing a hospital visit with a nurse visit. You're replacing uh, uh, somebody who has to move out of independent living and end up in a long-term care facility or into a skilled nursing facility and replacing that with a change in medication before it actually resulted in the complexities. We've even now got uh, our wearables that monitor change in gait of the senior in terms of swaying and stumbling so that we can use that to predict the likelihood of a fall. Now, I'm not going to say, look out, you're going to fall. We can't do that yet. But what we can do is, in a population of seniors, say, these are the top 10% that are most likely to have a fall in the next six months. And then you can focus your fall prevention resources on those seniors. Could you imagine if we could reduce falls by that amount by identifying those people who are most at risk, how much the seniors' independence would be improved, how much the healthcare, cost, uh, the healthcare industry could be improved, and everyone would be better off. So it's very, very exciting what's happening with ADL monitoring. And one of the best things about it is seniors don't have to change their behavior, right? You just install these sensors in their, in their uh, room or in their home or in their apartment and tell them to keep living life the way they normally would. They don't have to change their behavior. If you're doing vitals monitoring, you have to show up with a blue, uh, blood pressure monitor and say, here, uh, this is your new blood pressure monitor. And why, wait, well, I don't want a new blood pressure monitor. What's wrong with my old one that I've been using for 10 years and I'm very comfortable with? Oh, it doesn't have Bluetooth. This one connects Bluetooth through to this hub that we're plugging in your wall over here that's going to take the data. You can see where this is going, right? Programs that require a significant amount of change on behalf of the senior are much more likely to fail. So that's an important part of this. But one of the problems with ADL monitoring is it sounds a little big brotherish. Right? People get scared, wait a minute, what are you talking about? You're going to be monitoring me? You're going to be monitoring my bed activity? What? <laughs> this doesn't sound right. So uh, over time, we've had to really develop the ability to talk through those privacy issues 
to make sure people understand that the data that is being used, it's not monitoring continuously a human watching your activity. The computer is analyzing the data, constantly evaluating it. It's secure, it's private, and the only time that a human, any data is put in front of them when there is the likelihood of something that is going wrong and is happening. And people get much more comfortable when they know that. Still, we have found that in our population of seniors we target, that we can only get about 50% to agree at this point in time. But I think we can improve that as time goes on, as monitoring improves. So obviously it's getting better and better. We can use wearables now that, you know, with iWatch and Samsung devices that are very soon gonna be collecting even more data. So we're gonna have more and more data to make this, our ability to predict outcomes much better. Now, um, but one of the things that you can't do is get too excited about the technology without also thinking about the services that wrap around that technology. There have been a million companies that have shown up swearing they're gonna transform senior care with an app or a, tech, a new gizmo or something that's gonna change things. And at the end of the day, if you only focus on the technology, especially when it comes to senior population, the program will fail. You have to have a service that the senior is gonna engage with and enjoy and that they actually feel like it's helping them, that it's not just helping the healthcare system. And so uh, we call it at Best Buy Health, we call it the tech and the touch. You can't just be focused on the tech, you have to be thinking about the touch. So Geek Squad agents going into the senior's home to do the installations, walking them through the privacy issues, explaining how the technology is gonna work. People over the phones who can who are trained in senior sensitivity. So we train them in you know, issues that are going on with seeing and hearing and dexterity so that when they're talking with seniors, they know exactly how to properly service them so that they can be empathetic and compassionate with the customers that they're dealing with and help them get over any fears they have with the technology, stay engaged with the technology so that we can get the information we need to keep that senior healthy and independent longer. So that, that comparison of tech versus touch becomes such an important, important part of this, uh, of, this, of this ecosystem that we're creating to keep the senior independent longer in their existing, uh, in their existing facility. So lastly, I just want to talk about how the uh, advent of activities of daily living monitoring can actually help the senior living industry with new opportunities, new revenue opportunities in the industry. So in the old days, a senior would end up in the hospital, the hospital would bill Medicaid or Medicare, Medicare pays the hospital, the transaction is done. But as we all know, there is a lot more healthcare risk management that is happening, where the government is saying, I don't wanna take the risk of all of these seniors as they're aging and healthcare costs are going through the roof. I want to see if I can get some private sector companies to take on some of this risk and manage this risk for me. So I'm going to pay, say, a managed Medicaid company X amount per year to take care of that senior, and whatever it costs you to serve that senior and provide adequate health care for them, you get to keep the difference in profit. Well, that brings this opportunity of there's all of these private sector companies out there now who are out there saying, how can I provide better care at lower cost in simple ways? And they're motivated to do that because if they can figure out a way, it increases their profit. So activities of daily living monitoring is a great opportunity to take advantage of that because it is a simple way to show up, use some technology that can reduce the healthcare costs of that senior by 16 to 22% and result in a happier senior who's staying independent longer and is saving health care cost. So this is an opportunity for the senior living industry to step up and to work with some of these managed care companies to say, I want to play a role in helping you manage the health care risk of the population that I'm taking care of. And that I think I can do that and save you money while improving the care that we're delivering. So we have one client that we've worked with that was able to uh, use activities of daily living monitoring to get an incremental $900 per member per month uh, out of their Medicaid residence. So they went to their state, uh, one of their state managed Medicaid programs and talked to them about the ADL monitoring that we offer, uh, we call Lively Home. 
and worked with them through the data and showed them what the impact could be. And that managed Medicaid company agreed to pay an extra $900 per member per month for those Medicaid residents. So that's going from $2,700 to $3,600 per member per month. The next obvious question would be, well, how much does this activities of daily living monitoring cost per month to, uh, to put in and operate? And the average cost that we have with our customers is about $100 per member per month. So you can see there's a pretty good gap there between the cost of implementing a simple technology like this and the benefit that could possibly come from the revenue stream associated with working with a managed Medicaid or even Medicare Advantage company to get the reward of the, the risk that you're helping them manage with their senior. So again, predictive analytics is the future of senior care. We're gonna be able to use this data to help seniors stay healthier longer and stay in place. Oh wait, there was one other thing I forgot about what happens if you have a senior staying in their facility for even longer, right? There's less move outs because they get to stay there longer. So not only is it great for the senior, great for the healthcare system, but it's also great for uh, maintaining higher capacity. So predictive analytics are going to really help the seniors with their overall well-being, keep them independent longer, reduce the healthcare costs significantly, and it potentially provides a significant new revenue opportunity for getting involved in managing the healthcare risk of your residents. Thank you very much.